happy June. This month's vlog might be a little bit shorter because quite honestly I've not got anything left in the tank. June is always the month I struggle with the most because I don't do well in the heat. I'm dying right now trying to film this clip and I also have really bad allergies so I'm not going to subject you to a 30 minute video of me trying not to sneeze the entire time. It might just be mostly clips of the pets doing things which you'll probably much prefer anyway. One thing that I did want to quickly mention is you guys know I've been working with a brand called Follow and they make these wildlife bracelets I'm wearing right now and they've made them for a variety of different species over the years, things like elephants, sharks, all sorts of animals that need our help when it comes to conservation and they just brought out a new bracelet which I'm very excited about because they're an animal that I love, they're my mum's favourite animal and they have partnered with the Somali Giraffe Project to protect and conserve giraffes in the wild, particularly reticulated giraffes which they are classed as vulnerable and they do need our help. So if you are interested in helping and purchasing a bracelet, a portion of the proceeds of this will go towards conservation of these giraffes in the wild. And the fun part is you don't just get a bracelet that you can pick in one of their many colours, you also get a giraffe that you can track. This is mine, his name is Liban. I'm not entirely sure that I'm pronouncing that correctly, but you can track their journey where they're travelling, going about their day-to-day -day life. This past week that I'm filming this was actually World Giraffe Day, so if you are interested in supporting their conservation, I'll leave the link to their bracelets in the description. And they have many other animals available, like polar bears or penguins, just in case you prefer those animals instead. All of those are on the Fallow website, and you can also use my code, which is emulogy 20 that will get you 20% off your entire order, and so help towards their conservation. So please click the link in my description, and also make sure you're using that code to get yourself 20% off. So in one of my previous videos a couple of weeks ago, a few people were picking up on the fact that Clover had the start of a tumour, and in the last couple of weeks it has grown, I'd say pretty quickly when it comes to tumours I've experienced with mice. It is growing pretty rapidly, which is a shame because she's such a lovely mouse, and I think roughly she was born April last year, which would make her a year and two months, I think. And it was kind of P-shaped two weeks ago. Now, let me try and show you. It is, it is this kind of size, which is such a shame. This is the problem with mice, especially mice that have been badly bred. And I've experienced this a lot with show type mice that are bigger than other fancy mice. I believe she was purchased from a pet store, but obviously she is a very interesting looking mouse, so I think someone has bred her obviously along the lines and then sold her to a pet store. And her sister also passed away quite recently, so it really does suck and I have been getting my mice when they're a bit older, about six months to a year because I've been rescuing or adopting them. And I think that also makes me feel like I've been a little bit robbed of time with them because time goes so quickly and I'm not having them from eight weeks old or 10 weeks old. And it seems to me like they're going a lot quicker, but I've obviously been adopting them when they've been halfway through their life and it just feels like it's going so quickly. So unfortunately this does seem like it is growing pretty quick. So I'm not sure how long it's going to be before it's too much and too big and starts to affect her quality of life. It has left me deliberating what to do though because obviously in this enclosure in my Ikea Lin one, I've only got these two girls. I've got Clover and then also Wren and then we do have Flurry who is still alive somehow by some miracle so I don't know what to do because I had no intention of introducing them to my other two boys that are living separately um, whilst Flurry was still alive but if he is going to outlive all of my other mice, my females, then I might just have to do intros with him because at this point he's going to outlive like three generations of mice that I've got to be his companions and I just think he's going to live forever so I might have to change things slightly and just try introductions maybe sooner rather than later because I don't want to end up obviously with him by himself. Hey, I know it's so sad. I want you to live forever. Because you're so cute. You are, you have the prettiest face. Don't you? Hey, hi babies. Hi. Oh. What an interesting place to put your shed. I'm gonna try and get it. Because I wanna keep it. I should probably wet it first. Someone told me to do that. So it doesn't rip. Ooh, I want it. 
That is low-key terrifying. It looks like the eels from The Little Mermaid. So recently I've had a fair few questions asking what I use to varnish and protect my wooden items. I used to use for years and years something called Plasti Coat. You don't get very much and it's quite expensive for what it is. So I saw people recommending on rodent groups and reptile groups to use your varnish instead. Now it does have a fair few warnings on the tin that it's things like flammable and it can be toxic if it gets into your eyes and stuff. I believe these warnings are only for when it's in kind of the water form, when it's been aired out and dried and completely dry, there's no smell at all and I've never had any issues but I would definitely recommend going and doing your own research just in case and if you are very very cautious just use something like Plasti Coat or a varnish that's supposed to be kid safe and also for pet things instead so this is just what I use and it's always worked okay for me but if you are extra cautious, then I would maybe not recommend using this until you've done your own research. kindly sent another parcel from a small business called Printalot and the last time they sent me anything I loved it, the rats loved it, the mice loved it, I'm pretty sure you guys also loved it too because some of the things they come up with are so cute and so creative. Basically they make 3D printed toys for small pets and last time it was kind of like a natural theme with acorn toys. This time I've got no idea what they've sent so I'm very very excited. They've been adding a bunch of things to the Etsy store and they just come up with the best ideas so I'm not really sure what's in this box. I'm very excited to find out. So it says thanks a lot for sharing our small business. We love to see your rats enjoying the toys and then also they foster small animals, rats, mice, African softwood rats and find them good homes. Some of them have bad health problems and end up spending the remainder of their time with them. So no doubt if you do order from their store, some of that is going to help them continue to rescue these animals. And then on the back it says, P.S. the illustrations from last time were made by a good friend who is a talented children's book illustrator. And then also given her Etsy and her details. So I'll pop those also in the description and also a link to the Etsy store. But I'm very excited to find out what is in this. So we've got some more stickers from the illustrator friend. This one reminds me it's so much of Humbug. I'm gonna stick this on my laptop. I don't have any more space, but I'm gonna find space because does that not look just like Humbug? Then they've sent us another 3D printed foraging wheel, this time in an orange color. These are so good, my boys have not broken or chewed the other one they sent. They love using this, so I definitely recommend their foraging wheels. They're actually surprisingly sturdy considering that they're 3D printed. It just blows my mind that people can make these with a printer at home. So these are so good, my boys love this. And they've now got another one. 
Then we've also got another foraging toy. This one is in the shape of a daisy. And the details on top are so pretty and so intricate. I'm not sure if you can see, I'll put a close up in. But these type of foraging toys are so good for rats that maybe aren't that good at doing other ones. They are quite simple, they just have to lift off or knock this part off. You can make this more difficult for them by placing it high up in the cage, away from other items and make it a bit more challenging. But all of my rats can use these ones and they love it. And then somewhere in all of the paper, you know they had to, they've made a teeny, tiny one for the mice. This just kills me how cute and tiny this is. I just love anything miniature, so this is so, so cute. I love that they're also catering to mice and smaller rodents because a lot of foraging toys on the market just aren't small enough, but this is so perfect. Thank you so much. And then I think the last thing in here is another foraging toy. This one is so impressive, it still blows my mind how people are able to print this at home and make this into a functioning toy. This one again is a daisy design and all they have to do is lift up the flaps to get the different treats. This one is probably a bit more better suited to join their free roam or you could put this on a shelf or a ledge in their cage. Again, I'm just so impressed with these, they're so, so cool. Thank you so much for sending everything. Please do go and check out their website. I'll leave the link to their Etsy and all of their socials in the description. They make the best foraging toys. My rats love them, the mice love them. I've been using them ever since they sent the last ones. And they do stand up, they're such good quality and they love them, so thank you so, so much. Please do go and check them out and support small business and get yourself some really cute, tiny daisy or acorn foraging toys from their Etsy. So one of my channel members wanted to know, and I'm sure many of you are also curious, how the rats are getting on with their new wheel, and I'm happy to report that two out of four of them, I have caught them using the wheel multiple occasions. It's Kinder and also Crumpet. Mostly Kinder, he is the most active, and they are very, very sneaky about it though. I will be in here kind of tending to like other things, feeding the snake for example, and I'll hear a really strange noise, and it's them running on their wheel, but I'm sure if you've also got rats, which most of you watching probably do, that you'll know that as soon as you turn around and open the doors to try and take a picture or a video of them doing something funny and cute, they're not doing that thing anymore, they're at the doors wanting your attention. So anytime I try to open the doors and get a picture or a video of them running on this wheel, it is pretty much impossible. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it 
They are also using it as a nice cold bed at the moment, which I knew they would do. But yes, they have been using it and I'm so glad because I was kind of on the fence for ages about getting the wheel and they seem to really like it. So I think two out of four of them using it is not bad at all. I would honestly love to film more clips and content when it comes to the store, me packing orders and sorting all the products. I find it so, so fun. But this office is literally packed to the ceiling with products right now. It's so cramped in here. It's also super hot, so it's just not an enjoyable experience. Our new office is kind of halfway done at the moment. I can't wait to show you, and I can't wait to actually be in there using it because it's just gonna be miles better. So, the only thing I wanted to say when it comes to my store is for the month of July, so from the 1st of July all the way to the end of July, every single order over 20 pounds, um, excluding shipping, is gonna get a free packet of these banana chips they are natural they've got no like bad additives or anything and my rats and mice love these so if you do place an order on my store any day in the month of July you will receive one of these if you spend over 20 pounds it's definitely not because I placed an order for 10 packets and accidentally ordered 10 boxes instead um try not to cringe at how much that cost me but you guys get something from it and you get a free product instead so if you only follow me on YouTube, a lot of you are probably wondering who this giant puppy is and what I've done with River. She has doubled in size and weight since I got her. She's now about 7.2 kilograms, I think. And I think she was roughly around four kilograms when she came home. So she's getting very big, very tall, aren't you? But she is doing so, so well. I think this is my favorite age. I struggled a lot with the like teeny tiny puppy stage. And I'll openly admit that I really struggled with that stage because I could not be on the floor like this with her without being bitten to death. She was very, very relentless as a tiny puppy. I still don't 100% trust her, so I've got a treat just to stop her from chewing my hair. The cat is also coming to join. And I'll talk about that in a second as well. But she's doing much better. I can actually pet her now without getting bitten, which is lovely. So she is doing so good. And she's doing so, so well with her training. I will insert some clips of her training in a second and the stuff that she knows, but that was never really my full focus when it comes to bringing her home. I was never focused on training her tricks and stuff. And to be honest, there's a lot of things that I wish I'd done pretty much from the start. I wish I trained her to look at me. That has been so, so helpful. And things like that getting her to focus. So if I had to redo the entire experience, I would focus on things like that a lot more than things like sit and paw and down and stuff but she is doing really well i have really massively focused on socializing her which has been the most important thing so she has seen so many things she's seen so many different types of people construction horses sheep everything that i can possibly show her i've taken her pretty much everywhere with me that i've been allowed to take her so i think she's roughly at the end of her most crucial socialization um period in her life and she has seen a lot and taken it all so, so well. Sit. Yes. Down. Yes. With it up. Yes. Pull. Yes. Good girl. Touch. Yes. Leave it. Look at me. Look at me. Yes. Okay. Wait. Yes. Wait. Yes, good girl. Wait. Wait. Come. Good girl. Another place. Let's go. 
Come on, let's go. Let's go. Sit. Yes. Sit. Wait. Okay. So speaking of her and Hubble, that's probably been my most commonly asked question when it comes to you getting her. How are her and Hubble doing? And it's been a bit touch and go. He's lying down behind my camera right now. And yes, she's got a treat before. He would be way more fun than the treat. He has whacked her a good couple of times. And I think that's helped because at the start, we were doing a lot of management, trying to keep them apart, trying to switch which one was in here, which one was in another area and stuff. And that was a lot of hard work, trying to keep them separate and keeping them both happy that we just kind of had to let them figure it out themselves. And now he can be on the floor, she's not pestering him. She does try to go up to him and she does want to be his friend. He is not that keen at the moment. He does watch her a lot and try to interact and then get scared. But I think him learning that she's not going to do anything and not running away has been really, really important because that has been making her want to chase him. She tries to take him her toys to get him to play, which is so, so cute. So they're getting there. I don't think they're going to be best friends and cuddling anytime soon but the fact that he is on the floor right now is a major improvement. River, where are you going? <laughs> Ew! <laughs> Just to prove it, look, here is Hubble looking handsome as ever and then River is <laughs> staring at him. Be nice! She's so desperate to play with him but he stopped hissing quite as much he still gives her a little bop bop here and there but they are doing so so much better the fact that he's not jumping up and being scared she's gone right back to lying on my back so I now can't breathe again but Hubble is being really good I do feel so sorry for him but he's just having to adjust to it and he's still my baby he's still my favorite don't tell River that um I just love him he's just such a perfect you're perfect and you know it you've been such a good boy putting up with this annoying terrifying dog in your face haven't you but we still love you you're a very good boy look at him perfect boy and he knows it too you do don't you you're still the king of this house and the king of my heart whilst the dog puts her foot in my rib you would never do that actually you do do that to me don't you you jump right on my ribs in the morning yep so another commonly asked question I get a lot when I'm talking about her is when is she going to start her assistance dog training and I am working alongside a program that is going to help me to own a train. I literally can't breathe and talk because she's so heavy on my lungs right now. River please get off. But she is basically not going to start that training until she's around six months old to a year depending on how she's doing with other stuff like her basic manners, toilet training, stuff like that. So not going to start that anytime soon. She's still very much just being a normal puppy. This is not normal. Um, and just learning puppy things, which she is pretty much excelling in. I've signed her up to go to puppy classes, which I was kind of on the fence on. I found a really good class that doesn't allow them to just be a free for all and just be distracting the other puppies. She basically knows the entire syllabus already, like sit down, stay, recall, all of that, but it's going to be really good practice to get her used to doing it in an environment that's very, very distracting, so she's got that coming up. I've also booked a dog socialisation outing type thing that basically teaches you more about dog body language, which I think will be super helpful. I'm also booking her in to have a swimming lesson, which will be fun. I'm going to go in with her, which I've not been in a swimming pool in at least five years I think something like that so I need to remember how to swim as well so that should be interesting but loads and loads of things booked up for her over the next month or so do I have the energy for them no but I'm gonna do my best to take her to all of these and start classes and stuff but she's not starting like proper assistance dog training for a good couple of months I am gonna start roughly introducing her to certain tasks and stuff just for fun but nothing serious at least until she's six months old ish but yeah she is taking up most of my time at the moment and I'm sure most people will understand and if you've had a puppy definitely understand just how much hard work and how much it takes over your life which part of me feels guilty because I don't 
she's teething and I think a tooth just came out. Part of me feels guilty because I don't have as much time to put into making other content. I'm just trying to survive at the moment but i'm sure most people especially puppy parents will get that so it's not going to be like this forever i've had a few questions asking am i gonna stop owning rats am i gonna get rid of my rats now that i've got river not at all that is not the case i'm definitely not rushing to get anything else anything new at the moment because i'm at like max brain capacity with what i can handle but i'm not gonna suddenly change all of my other interests I wish dog training was like my special interest. It's not, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I think I'm doing an okay job. So not changing anything. This is not gonna be a dog channel anytime soon. But if you do want to see more things off River, I did go to a country show with her in a stroller, in a pushchair, because she has had her last vaccine now, but you can't take them on the floor fully until like a week after that's all like settled in their system. So still pushing around in a push chair and a stroller so here are those clips But I think I'm going to end this video here. Thank you so, so much for watching. And of course, a huge thank you to my channel members for your continued support. I would say click the join button down below if you want to become a channel member and support me and the animals. I've not been having that many exciting updates, to be honest. I'm not doing anything exciting right now besides just surviving and keeping everyone alive. So I'm not going to suggest that to you if you don't want to. But a huge, huge thank you to all of my current channel members for your continued support. And of course, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.